This is a special time. A special game played by those filled with the unbridled passion and innocence of youth in a magical setting where dreams are reality. The nation's number one team, the Texas A&M Aggies, return to Omaha for the first time in 29 years and are eyeing a national championship. This year's Cinderella team, the Kansas Jayhawks, earned their first ever invitation to the big ball and hope midnight never arrives. Two teams hoping their dreams will come true as they open up the 1993 College World Series. Welcome to Johnny Rosenblatt Stadium, host for the 44th consecutive year here in Omaha, Nebraska, to the NCAA College World Series. Game one, top-seeded Texas A&M against eight-seeded Kansas. We're live. Hello, everyone. I am Tim Brando, welcoming you to our week-long coverage of the College World Series here on ESPN. We've done it since 1979. Very proud to be entering our 14th year. During those years, perhaps you haven't seen a field quite as good as this one. Let's take a look at the bracketing. The field is bracketed into two slots. Bracket two, which begins play tomorrow, Arizona State against seventh-seeded Wichita State, Texas and Oklahoma State, all familiar names. Now, today in bracket one, Texas A&M, the top seed against Kansas, and coming up later tonight, on ESPN, Long Beach State taking on LSU. And a man that knows a great deal about the College World Series, a three-time champion at USC, big league all-star performer Fred Lynn. Fred, let's talk about this matchup because of the balance, this may be the most unbalanced that we'll see. Yeah, that's right. Uh, Texas A&M comes in here with a vaunted pitching staff led by Jeff Granger, the number five pick in yesterday's Major League Baseball draft, and he can probably dominate a college game like no pitcher that we yeah. will we'll probably see. So the Kansas Jayhawks certainly have their work cut out for them, and they're going to try to score early against this guy and do anything that they can to score. Manufacture a few runs, You right? bet. All right. We have a third member to our broadcast team throughout this College World Series. You know him from basketball. He knows about field conditions today, Larry Conley. Thanks, Tim. One of the big factors today is the playing conditions of this game is going to be the grass in front of home plate. As you can see, the sod area right here, which has been laid, this is actually very thick and very tall. As you get off of this and get back to the regular grass on the infield, if the ball hits there, it's going to skid. If it hits short here, it's going to slow that baseball down. A second big breaking story here is the loss of Lee Fedora, the Texas A&M third baseman. He took a shot in the right side of the mouth and actually lost a tooth in batting practice. It was a bad hop, and they're taking him away to get him sewn up. Big breaking story right here before the first game of the College World Series. Tim, it may be a David and Goliath type game, but it may have just gotten balanced out. Back to you. You're right, Larry. Anxiety is always a factor in game one. Expect the unexpected today. The Aggies, the Jayhawks, coming up next. ESPN's presentation of the 1993 College World Series is brought to you by Advanced Formula 2001 Super Protectant. Helps protect vinyl, leather, and rubber from fading. And by Budweiser, the king of beers, who reminds you, friends know when to say when. This is where it happened. The breakthrough in urethane chemistry that created Finish 2001. The car polish so advanced, you use it only once a year. This old car's finish appears destroyed. With no rubbing, no buffing, Finish 2001 safely brings back a shine that lasts an entire year. Nothing but nothing shines or protects better than 100% guaranteed Finish 2001. Finish 2001 is available at these fine stores. La la la, la la la. La la la, la la la. La la la, la la la. la, 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 la. Why is it always the same old story? Why ask why? Try a less filling beer with a lot more taste, but dry. When it comes to a great beer, we wrote the book. I don't need some fancy aftershave to tell me I'm a man. And I don't need some expensive cologne to make time with the ladies. I use Skin Bracer. It smells great. 
It also cools my skin, tones it up, and takes care of it after a good close shave. I don't need anything more. Confidence is very sexy, don't you think? Skin Bracer Aftershave, more than a great scent. By Menon. Now for the starting lineups in game one of the College World Series. Dave Bingham in his sixth year of the Kansas Jayhawks has resurrected his program to a first ever trip. Leading off for him and playing second base will be Jeff Berblinger out of Goddard, Kansas. Daryl Monroe covers a lot of territory, will be in center, he's out of Lawrence. Hitting third and playing first base from Phoenix, Arizona, John Wycheck. The cleanup man is their leading RBI hitter, Jeff Niemeyer, he'll be behind the plate. Josh Igo will be in left field out of Jackson, Tennessee. Hitting sixth will be Rory Tarquinio out of Scottsdale, Arizona. Brent Wilhelm will be over at the hot corner. He's out of Independence, Missouri. Dan Rude will play shortstop from Billings, Montana today. And hitting ninth will be designated hitter Brian Turney. And they will be facing Jeff Granger. There you see his stat statistics and that very impressive they are. He has a major league fastball. A very hard slider, likes to, likes to throw down and in to right-handers when he gets them ahead. And he has two types of change-ups. One is a three-finger change, and one is a split-finger change, which does a little bit of sync. Here's the starting defense for the Texas Aggies. Rob Trimble will be doing the catching. Over at first base will be John Curl. At second base, Eric Gonzalez is second on the team with 49 RBIs. At shortstop is Robert Harris. At third base is Robert Lewis. And in left field is the co-captain, Billy Harlan. And Thomas is over there in center field, and the adjustments that were made, you see Stephen Claybrook is in right. We've seen four position changes, Fred, because of the loss of uh, their starting third baseman Fedora that tells you something about college baseball yeah they're they're certainly not deep that's for sure temperature 61 degrees there is no chance of rain it's become slowly a chamber of commerce day here in Omaha wind is blowing in somewhat 10 to 15 miles per hour shapes up as a pitcher's afternoon just as I say that it is lifted to right as Berblinger takes it high to Claybrook just in foul ground for the first out. First pitch swinging Jeff Burblinger, and that is something we anticipated in today's game from him. He is a table setter that is a free swinger, not your normal run of the mill leadoff man. Here's Daryl Monroe hitting 341. You see the on base percentage 39 RBIs, a junior from Lawrence, Kansas. Ranger, the fifth pick. In the first round of the Kansas City Royals, ironic that uh, he could perhaps be pitching professionally here next year, as this is the home of the Kansas City Royals Triple A Farm Club, the Omaha Royals. He could be pitching here next month. Yeah, <laughs> that quickly. You're right. He's that good. In fact, uh, we have seen throughout the course of the years here top picks. Ben McDonald, perhaps the one that comes to mind most quickly, that went right up to the Orioles after having some contract problems after signing with Baltimore or trying to sign with Baltimore after having been drafted in 89. Two and one the count to Daryl Monroe. One out just underway top of the first. A little high heat that time to even the count at two and two. There's that major league fastball we were talking about at the beginning of the show in this kid can really throw. If you're looking for anything else besides number one, he'll throw it right by you. That one was 90 miles per hour on the ray gun. His heat, if you use the jugs gun, and it's usually five miles per hour faster than the normal ray that the scouts in the major leagues use, on the jugs gun here down at the college level, he'd be around 93, 94 on a normal day. Lost him, and Monroe is aboard. This would give head coach Dave Bingham an opportunity to get things going and try to manufacture a run. That's what he was hoping for to get this eighth seed into the ball game early. 
You know, they're going to try to do anything they can against Granger. Hit and run, bunt, steal. The only problem with stealing against Granger, he has a great move to first. Here's John Wycheck, the first baseman. Lifted into foul ground and brought in by Lewis. And they have a chance at a double play and can't come up with it. First pitch swinging again, and they did have Monroe on his way. Yeah, it looked like it was a hit and run play, and here's Monroe breaking. He reads Granger very well, gets a pretty good jump. He's taking a look back to make sure where the ball is hit, sees that it's lifted and not very high to third base, and that's the hustle back. Just gets in. Dave Bingham wasn't kidding, was he? He did have the hit and run on right away with the left hand hitter at the plate, and why check? Here's Jeff Niemeyer. His story is a masterpiece at the collegiate level. He does have a good move, does Jeff Granger. Niemeyer missed the entire Mideast Regionals. Their leading RBI hitter, spiritual leader, out because of an injury, a fractured left foot, as you see Monroe, good on 23 of 31 stolen base opportunities. And the mere fact that they're here, based on Niemeyer's not participating in Knoxville at that particular regional, is in itself quite a feat for Dave Bingham's club. It speaks volumes for the rest of the club. You know, they lost their main guy, and the rest of them rallied around him. And, uh, you know, these guys, even though they're eight-seeded, they're not to be taken lightly. Granger, he likes to hang up there with that uh, move to first base. What he likes to do is hang with that right leg, and then he reads the runner. Here you get a look at it. As he's checking out Monroe, he hangs and then reads the runner and then flips it over. Actually, they got it picked off. They sure do. That's what happens occasionally when you try to manufacture something. And with two outs, he had him going all the way. And Granger, with that tremendous look-back maneuver, was able to make the play. Nothing doing for Kansas in the opening half of the first inning as we prepare for the bottom half of the inning. The Texas A&M Aggies ranked number one in college baseball no less than six weeks during the regular season. Here for the first time in 29 years. For four of the past six years, they have made it all the way to the regional finals, yet have not cracked the College World Series. This year, they had an opportunity to host, and they managed to get out of College Station and into Omaha, Nebraska. This is a quality team with a lot of offensive punch, but particularly their pitching has been a real catalyst this year. Their head coach is Mark Johnson. What a remarkable job he has done in his nine years, and leading off for him and playing left field will be Billy Harlan. The shortstop will be Robert Harris today out of Westbury High in Houston, Texas. Brian Thomas will be in center field. John Curl, a big left-handed hitter, right handed fielder will be at first base. Robert Lewis will be over at third today. Rob Trimble moves behind the plate because of the injury again to Fedora. Scott Smith will be uh, playing the designated hitter role today while Eric Gonzalez moves to second and Stephen Claybrook will be in right field today. And they're going to be facing Jayhawk pitcher Chris Korn. He's got pretty good numbers himself and has been pitching well lately. He has a better than average fastball with a very good curveball. So it's a slider and a change, but he must get his breaking stuff early over in the count so that he's successful. Here's the catcher, Jeff Niemeyer, leads the team with a 378 average. At first base, John Wychuk. At second base, Jeff Burblinger. At shortstop is Dan Rude. At third base is Brent Wilhelm. And in left is Josh Igo. In center is Daryl Monroe, second on the team with 23 stolen bases. And in right is Rory Tarquinio. Leading off, Billy Harlan, the left fielder, junior from Corsicana, Texas. Chris Korn from Louisville, Kentucky on the hill today. 6'3", 165 pounder. And Harlan gets all of that one. Sending the center fielder Monroe to the track to make the catch. 
Now on a normal day when the wind is blowing out that ball would carry a bit more but you notice during batting practice today the ball was not carrying particularly well and you can see through that illustration of the flag why it's not carrying. Yeah the flag's blowing in it's about 60 degrees at game time it's a little chilly and the ball is definitely not carrying that ball normally is over the center fielder's head. The dimensions here 332 down the lines. 360 in the power alleys a very spacious center field as Robert Harris the shortstop steps up. It pays to have a center fielder that can go get them in this ballpark because in the power alley and particularly in center field more ground than you you'd see the average collegian play in in most college ballparks. Yeah, this is a bigger ballpark than uh, most uh, college parks that you see. This is a triple-A ballpark for the Kansas City Royals, so it is a big ballpark, although it used to be bigger. Uh, 20 years ago, it was 420 to center field. In on the hands, and a driven foul, and a long way foul by Harris. Got that uh, club head out in front of the pitch. Yeah, here's Harris's swing, and I'll tell you what, for a small man, he has generated a lot of bat speed and a lot of power. But don't ever tell him that he's small. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. He made the switch, Robert Harris did, from second base to shortstop. He was penciled in to start at that location this year. You see the sophomore majoring in agriculture business. So he had to make a transition defensively this year and became a member of their all regional tournament team. That one hurt right off the instep. Well, the Aggies have already lost one player. They don't need to lose another one here to an injury. Here's the pitch from Corn, kind of runs in on Aaron. Oh, right off the instep of the front foot. Boy, let me tell you, that hurts. He's trying to walk it off right now. There's Mark Johnson. 15 years he served as an assistant before he got his opportunity. Coached under some of the best. Jerry Kendall at Arizona. Ron Polk at Mississippi State. And then took over for Tom Chandler at Texas A&M after serving as an assistant for a couple of years. You talk about the loss of Fedora. What this does to the team is it affects them offensively. Fedora was... Uh, good for 45 RBIs and eight home runs. In essence, they become a better defensive team, perhaps, with Claybrook moving to right field. But again, you've now moved your catcher to, uh, to third. You've moved your designated hitter behind the plate. So Mark Johnson is uh, faced with a few problems today in his opening game. Yeah, he certainly has less options coming off the bench now. I mean, he could have done all those options in the seventh or eighth inning. He's had to do it early in this game, which limits his possibilities. Up high for a ball. Two and two the count. One out. Bottom half of the first. No score. Kansas and Texas A&M. Horn from Louisville, Kentucky. Prepped at Mail High School. Got that one up in the zone. The concern when talking with Dave Bingham about Chris Horn was that in his last outing in the regional, he was a little nervous. Never really got it going. And they had to yank him after six innings. This is the ninth pitch coming to Harris. He's thrown a number of pitches already. Yeah, Corn has a very good curveball, but uh, so far he hasn't featured it. So he's not going to fool too many people with his fastball. I mean, it's a good one, but he can't rely on it heavily. Just missed, and uh, Harris is aboard. The breaking ball is going to be a real key for all the teams in the College World Series. The command of it usually spells the difference between a pitcher going the distance or getting yanked in the middle innings. Ryan Thomas coming up. Look at those numbers. Hitting 381 is on base percentage. Well over 500. 14 home runs, 53 RBIs. Texas A&M as a team, very aggressive on the base pads. Something that Dave Bingham was very concerned about, very happy to have Jeff Niemeyer behind the plate to help control this A&M club, which seemingly is always on the move. You know, we were watching Niemeyer throw yesterday, and he does have a cannon. Just missed outside. Off-speed pitch that time. One and one to count. 
This is what Korn has to do. He has to get that breaking over ball over early in the count, and then he can rely on his fastball later in the count. with the speed took something off that one to get the inside corner at the knees one and two the count well the curveball from corn is, is his best pitch it's his bread and butter and he fools Thomas right here he just makes him freeze that was such a good curveball Good crowd here from Kansas. Tickets were on a premium in Lawrence as they tried to make their way here. Just missed down low. But that's good news for Dave Bingham. If he's missing low, that's okay. When Chris Korn gets in trouble, it's when his release point is up high. And, uh, and they can get around on his fastball when it's up there. Three and two the count. One out, one on. There goes Harris. Slapped foul down the left field side. Actually, what you want to do with good hitters like Brian Thomas is pitch them backwards. Uh, you'd like to pitch them with all the breaking stuff and slow stuff early in the count, and then you can throw your fastball by them after you've already established the breaking stuff. And that's what he's done in this at bat with Thomas, although unfortunately he's run the count to three and two, and Thomas should get a pretty good ball to hit right here. Harris was caught leaning with the throw not quite in time. Split second difference there. He may have been thrown out. Harris has five stolen bases and 11 tries this year. The 3 2. Driven to right. Perfect location that time with Harris moving and the second baseman Berblinger moving towards second. He found the hole to Brian Thomas for the base hit. Perfectly placed single to put the Aggies with runners at the corners with one out here in the first. Here you see Harris's lead. He gets a good jump on a 3 2 pitch, which is a breaking ball, and Thomas lines it into right field. Here's the here's the pitch again. Here's the breaking ball, but it's up. 3-2 curveball up, and he laces it into right for the base hit. Here's Big John Curl. If he gets a hold of one, look out. He's a joy to watch BP. 305, seven home runs, 29 RBIs. From Logan Sport, Indiana. Just a sophomore. Slapped. Base hit to left. In comes Harris. Thomas stops at second, two on and one run in. The Aggies lead it one to nothing. That is a made-to-order base hit for Mark Johnson. He loves to see the left-hand hitters go the other way, and that's what Curl did. Yeah, that's a real a nice piece of hitting and a fastball running away from Curl. He doesn't try to pull it, which he probably hit into a double play, and he smacks it into the vacated hole at short and third. This outfield is very, very slow. So balls hit out there into the outfield. These outfielders are going to have to charge if they're going to have any kind of play at throwing somebody out. A run in on two hits for Texas A&M. The base on ball is obviously a factor in giving Texas A&M this 1-0 lead. Robert Lewis hitting 352. Five home runs, 29 RBs. He was set to begin this game at the catching spot. That's his favorite location defensively. He was pressed to duty to third after the loss of Lee Fedora. Right to second should be two. Burbling to Rude over to Wycheck. Kansas gets a great break that time on the 4 6 3 DP. But a run scores for AM. They lead it one to nothing. 
See 3,500 of America's best Olympic caliber athletes witness the inspiring lighting of the Olympic cauldron and experience the most spectacular entertainment extravaganza coming to the Alamo Dome. Be part of the magical opening ceremonies of the U.S. Olympic Festival 93, Friday night, July 23rd. Be there as the dome erupts in celebration. Reserve your seats today. Call 224-9600 or visit any Ticketmaster location. Your opening ceremony tickets get you a free trip on Via's Park and Ride or downtown shuttles. San Antonio's business community is talking about Digital Music Express, better known as DMX. It makes my customers relax a lot more and they feel more like at home. Convenience. There's no more CDs to mess with. Now there's so much variety with DMX that no one argues anymore. Uh, it really helps keep my patients comfortable and relaxed. These are just a few satisfied customers benefiting from DMX. Call Paragon Business Systems and add DMX to your business. Frank Boxing, Super Middleweight Champion James Lights Out Tony battles Glenn Thomas. I'm the best. The best. Plus live coverage of the Foreman Morrison weigh-in. Top Rank Boxing, Sunday afternoon, live on ESPN. One to nothing, our score, Texas A&M forging a run across in the bottom half of the first inning with the help of a base on balls and two base hits. The RBI going to John Curl. And as you look at Johnny Rosenblatt Stadium, over $8 million worth of improvements. That uh, skybox you see down the first base side. Just uh, one new aspect here. Brand new scoreboard in left field here at Rosenblatt Stadium. Improvements being made in the parking lot. I mean, it is just absolutely magnificent here. I hardly even recognize this place. Uh, when I played here, College World Series uh, about uh, five or six years ago. <laughs> <laughs> Jeff Niemeyer leads it off. He was up at the plate when uh, Monroe was caught, hung up between first and second to close out the inning. Back in the first. We talked about his foot. Now it's a, the left foot, which as a hitter, Fred would be the lead foot. I, I wonder how that might impact his swing as he comes back after the eight games off. Lifts that one into shallow right. Stephen Claybrook will bring it in. One down. Well, the problem with that is that when he shifts his weight from his backside to his front side, that's when he's going to feel it if he does in, indeed have a problem with it. And when I watched him swing right there, he didn't really drive into the ball very well. So maybe that front side is giving him some problems. Josh Igo, the left fielder, switch hitter, 5'9, 170 pound sophomore, steps in from Jackson, Tennessee. <laughs> Takes a strike in and over. 0 and 1 the count. Slowly, this young guy became one of the top hitters in the Kansas lineup this year as the season progressed. In oh. fact, this is a team you look at the numbers and you say, wait a minute, Cinderella, that doesn't fit. They've got the, the run production and the slugging percentage to, to be here. But in truth, they really don't have star quality players up and down the lineup as so many of the other teams in this year's College World Series had. You know, they are a good team. They are well balanced. They're hitting 320 as a club. I mean, that's very respectable. But uh, they don't have the marquee players that some of the other ball clubs do, as Jeff Granger. A rotisserie league type would have real problems with us calling this a Cinderella team. <laughs> Fastball up in the strike zone. And the count is run to three and one. Quality club, and boy, what a long way they've come, and a good lead. Ranger misses on the outside corner, and I go as a board with a base on ball. You think about it, Kansas in the Big Eight with Oklahoma State, Oklahoma, perennial powers, Wichita State in this very same state. They've been a power under Gene Stevenson for so many years. Really a very difficult job for this team to, to crack through in the Big Eight and make their way here. Here is Rory Tarquinio, senior from Scottsdale, Arizona. Playing right field today. Strike call outside corner at the knees. I think the KU runners are going to be a little bit more wary now of Mr. Granger and his move. A few years ago, an eighth seed was here. 
the Citadel. They lost their opening game but were very competitive. In one game, Child Port, the head coach of the Citadel, had five players picked off at a variety of locations. Third base, second, and first. With some good movement on that curve. Just missing on the inside portion of the play. One and one to count. Well, I go at first base has not figured Granger's move out yet. He was going back to first on that throw to the plate, so that's what Granger wants. Fooled him that time. Tarquinio waving. And it's one and two. He tied a big eight record, Rory did, with 11 hits in the conference tournament, tying such notables as Robin Ventura and Ernesto Rivera of Oklahoma State. Pretty good company. Kansas, by the way, did play Oklahoma State in the finals of the Big Eight tournament. Oklahoma State beat them twice to claim the Big Eight conference crown, but both moved on. Kansas with the at-large entry into the NCAA. The 2-2. And on the hands over to third. Lewis bobbles it, and remember the loss of Lee Fedora. That's a catcher playing third. Now, even though he's had a lot of experience at third base, he came to the ballpark today expecting to catch. Absolutely. You know, he has to shift mentally. He says, now I'm a third baseman. He hasn't taken ground balls. He didn't take ground balls yesterday. He worked out with the catchers. So he doesn't know this infield as well as, as some of the other guys who knew they were going to play the infield. It just shakes you up mentally. Sure it does. And Brent Wilhelm, the third baseman for the Jayhawk steps in with two on and one out. An opportunity for Kansas to crack through, trailing one to nothing here in the top half of the second inning. That's Igo at second base. Tarquinio at first aboard on the E5 if you're scoring at home. This is not an easy infield to play anyway. Uh, Larry Connolly did that piece before the game with that new sod in front of home plate. The ball's never going to come off the bat the same way twice. So you really have to have experienced guys out there to be able to handle that. You can really see the indention of the sod, the difference there in that picture right there. And, and then from the high angle, you can see the coloration. See the darker color? That's the sod that Larry was talking about. If the ball brushes there, it kills it. But then if it hits beyond that where the tarp's been located, it'll it'll move. 2-0 the count to Wilhelm. That's a good pitch. 2-1 the count. For the first time missing badly in this sequence against Wilhelm. Now you get a, a, a shot of where the KU batters are standing in the batter's box and they're wearing out that back line. And anytime a guy throws 93 miles an hour, you want to get as far away from him as possible. That last pitch was clocked at 88. And now the 3 1 pitch. Overpowered him that time to run the count to full. This is the kind of stuff that as a hitter and you know you're facing a, a good fastball pitcher you got to tell yourself I can't swing at the ball above the belt because it has a little ride to it. I'm not going to be able to catch on up to it. Got to make sure the ball is below the belt. Got to be very disciplined against a guy like this. Two on and the three two pitch coming to Wilhelm. A shot in the gap. And they'll hold the runner. Igo will stay at third because of the arm belonging to Harlan. And again, the ball died somewhat. And ideally, you want Harlan to be playing in, and he was out in left field. The bases are loaded. As we mentioned before, the outfield grass, very long, very slow. The outfielders, since the wind is blowing in, can cheat in now and cut some of those balls off because once they get out to the outfield grass, they're really going to slow down. So Granger in some trouble.
Here is Dan Rude, the shortstop from Billings, Montana. Sophomore out of Skyview High School. There you see his numbers. Rude is one of those guys that uh, when he gets hot can really be a major factor in a game. They, they don't anticipate much offense from him. But in recent games, particularly the championship game with Fresno State, he went two for four and has a lot to do with why Kansas is here. Goes to lay it down and it'll go foul. Ranger had a chance to get there and he's got good speed and that's proof of it. This is an interesting play because this is what we were talking about at the beginning of the show trying to manufacture runs against Granger bases loaded situation with one out and the guy tries to push bunt I mean a right handed hitter is trying to push that ball out to second base just so they can get one run in because runs come at a premium against Jeff Granger and, and although he's not really sharp today he's really hasn't displayed that sharp breaking slider that we know he has so right now the advantage is to Kansas they can uh, push a run across here be great for the momentum. I go getting a pretty good lead down there. One and one the count. That's Josh I go at third. Rory Tarquinio is down at second. Brent Wilhelm at first. The Jayhawks the benefit of a hit and the base on balls factor and an error against third baseman Robert Lewis have loaded the bases. Chopped right to Lewis. Could he get restitution? Yes, sir. He comes back to record a double play. Hey, he can catch it. He can play the corner, can he? Red Devil Enamel. You can always count on its durable finish. Harder than ordinary paints, its beauty lasts and lasts. Red Devil Enamel, for the finish of a lifetime. Tire foam protectant from Armor All. One spray, and even old tires look great. Ah, kind of makes you wish we made car foam. Tire foam from Armor All. Every Monday, there's a heat wave. Every Tuesday, it snows. And the rest of the week doesn't get any better. Testing the reliability of train air conditioners takes 16 miserable weeks. But when it's helping to make them some of the most durable air conditioners on Earth, you don't mind the sudden changes in weather. Designed, tested, and manufactured to last, it's hard to stop a train. Texas A&M is leading Kansas one to nothing. We move to the bottom half of the second inning. A number of clouds in the sky, and uh, you love to see players at the amateur level out of position come back and make plays like this after committing a, a very difficult error, and that's what Robert Lewis did. Yeah, it makes a nice play. Knew exactly where he was on the field. Just hopped over to third base instead of trying to go to home and made the play himself. Good stretch by John Curl over at first to get them out of the inning. And you, you put that one in, in a not in the box score category if it's a one run ball game late. That's a real momentum killer. That could have been a really a big lift mentally for the KU Jayhawks had they scored a couple of runs against Jeff Granger in that inning. Here is Rob Trimble. Was uh, slated to be the designated hitter today, but moved behind the plate when Lewis was forced to third because of the injury to Lee Fedora. And in case you missed it there's our first souvenir of the college world series in case you missed it Lee Fedora during batting practice today had a hit in the mouth on a bad hop and is being stitched up they're hopeful that he'll be ready for game two should they and it doesn't matter whether they win or lose they will play again on Sunday and he'll be back in the lineup Chris Korn Serves up a fastball that's rifled to right by Trimble. And the Aggies have their third hit. I'll tell you what, both clubs are coming out swinging. They're not they're not taking anything. They're swinging at the first pitch and the first available strike. They're hacking. Trimble kind of coils here, but he gets it his bat in good position and the ball's right down the middle and he hits a rope in the right field. These guys from uh, Texas A&M can definitely hit the fastball. You better feature something else besides a, a heater to these guys. Designated hitter Scott Smith steps in. Another one of the many extremely versatile players that 
Mark Johnson has on this Aggie team. Saw it off that time. Got that hands and pushed it towards the bullpen. Hard to saw off aluminum, but <laughs> it did happen. The Aggies got here at home. Taking on Yale in the first round, representing the Ivy Group, the Yale team, Lamar, and that's a fine team Jim Gilligan has, UCLA, and then North Carolina, who was the second seed. The ACC had a magnificent season with Georgia Tech ranked number one at one point. Jason Veritek, a top round draft pick as, as a catcher, but NC State lost at Oklahoma State in that particular region, and uh, North Carolina had their problems at Texas A&M. You know, looking at that graphic, everybody talks about the vaunted pitching staff of the Aggies, but yet they scored double figures in runs in every game against quality competition. So, hey, let's hear it for the hitters. Yeah. I mean, these guys can smack it around a little bit. I mentioned the versatility of Smith. He has started 29 games as a designated hitter or as an outfielder. They can move him just about any place they like in the outfield. He's comfortable everywhere they put him. And today, that comes into play when you lose a Fedora and it forces four position changes. The 2 1. Runner goes. Trimble on the move, and the throw is in time. Niemeyer and the arm that we were talking about comes into play. He is a thinking man's catcher, Jeff Niemeyer. Yeah, this is a hit and run play, and Korn features a good fastball up in the zone. And Smith can't handle it. Actually, it's a good pitch for Neymar to throw down to second. And as you can see, he gets it down there in a hurry. Here's another look at it from center field. Here's the ball right down the middle. And Neymar comes out of there throwing and just a bullet to second base. He's out easily. Again, Smith not able to get around on the fastball from Korn. One of the real tricks of the trade, and Dave Bingham talked to us about it with respect to Niemeyer, is that he does a good job of keeping his pitching staff out of difficult situations with runners on. By calling the game, he calls an extremely good game. It is rare in college baseball that you hear a coach talk with such confidence about the cerebral aspect of his catcher. In fact, uh, many times in the College World Series, and you know this as well as anyone, the pitches are called by the coaches. More than half of these teams usually call the games from the dugout rather than from behind the plate. Yeah, you have to have a lot of confidence in your catcher to let him call the signals. I'll say one thing. Horn is throwing some balls right down Broadway for Scott Smith to hit, and he's just fouling them off. But sooner or later, he's got to time one of these babies. He got his looks, and he serves a single to center. Well called, Lynn. Well, you know what? <laughs> you know, Corn was throwing the ball by him. Pretty much. I mean, on the hit and run play, threw a fastball down the middle, threw it right by him. Finally gets him to 3 2. He's fouled off numerous balls. And then he gets a curveball and he gets a base hit. I mean, as a pitcher, once you're throwing a ball by a guy, just keep doing it. Mm -hmm. Keep doing it until he proves that he can handle it. So now Smith is aboard with one out and Eric Gonzalez up. You see Jeff Granger, evidently the uh, inning taking a while. He's going to loosen up. He doesn't get enough throws in during the game. He says, I, I, I need about 150 <laughs> a game. I'll get a few on the side here. Wonder if R.C. Slocum, uh, the A&M football coach, would like to see him get a pigskin. Yeah, and, really. And yeah. Toss that when he's not on the mound. There's at least spirals there's... down there. <laughs> Good pitch. The outside corner at the knees. One and one the count to Gonzalez. Eric Gonzalez from Robstown, Texas, played at Southmost JC. Magnificent defensive player. In the regionals, 18 chances with an out and without an error, and five double plays that he was able to turn.
One and two the count with one out. And Scott Smith down at first. Gonzalez, all Southwest Conference second baseman. And the only Aggie to start every game this year. There are a lot of coaches that would love to give their talent a rest during the long season. And there are more games played, frankly, in the Southwest Conference, the Southeastern Conference, and the in the Pac-10 areas because of the, the weather. Helps to have the added depth. And uh, Texas A&M has a load full of talent in that dugout. Speed pitch down in the dirt. The count runs to full at three and two. Now these kids play a long season. You know they play about 70 games or so, and uh, sooner or later you're going to need your bench strength. And it may not be early in the season, may not be till late, but uh, sooner or later you're going to have to call on those guys. And it helps to have them have had some playing time early during the season, especially if you want to call on them now. Some bad news for Dave Bingham. Is that uh, Chris Horn is now throwing for the fourth time a three and two pitch, and we're only in the second. Lifted in foul ground to third to Wilhelm. Rick Wilhelm will take it in. Two down. Harry Conley is standing by, and I think he has some parents of one of the stars in today's game. Yeah, Tim, I do. I've had Don and Marsha Corn, obviously the pitcher of Chris Corn, the Kansas pitcher on the mound right now. And Don, is he a little nervous out there today? Oh, this is such a big experience. You can see how nervous he is. He's trying to change pitches here and be very cautious here in the first few innings. Marsha, I've got to ask you a question. I understand you kind of burn up those phone lines between Lawrence and Louisville. Is that true? Yes, sir, that's true. Every, every day that they play at home, I call, and I have a relationship with Max Finnegan in the press box. And we didn't meet until this weekend face-to-face, -face. and he knows my voice. You call them in the middle of the game? I call them in the middle of the game and at the end. <laughs> Guys, that's a true blue mother. <laughs> <laughs> that's right, Larry. Matt Finnegan, the sports information director at Kansas, and a boy, nice block there by Neymar. Stephen Claybrook, the right fielder, is in the batter's box with uh, two down. And Scott Smith the board here in the second inning and Texas A&M leading it by a score of one to nothing. Claybrook pressed into duty in right field. Was to have gotten the day off. Stephen uh, dislocated his right shoulder on May 1st against Texas. In fact was the starting shortstop until that injury occurred could not get back into the starting lineup. You know, they like Claybrook. He has great speed, and he's almost like having the second leadoff hitter hitting the ninth position. If he can get on base, uh, of course, there's a runner on in front of him now, but he can steal a base for you. He's got great speed. Interesting to hear Chris Corn's father talking about noticing the changing of speeds oh. and that he's having some difficulty in controlling that aspect simply because of adrenaline. Yeah, I think all fathers know their sons, and, and he's... No different than any other father. He says, hey, my son's a little nervous. He's pumped up. <laughs> He's throwing that change of about 85 miles an hour. The 2-2 delivery. Oh. Release point a bit high that time, wasn't it? Yeah, well, he's overthrowing a little bit, and I think that's a lot of adrenaline. But uh, after a couple innings, you'd, you'd think that he'd settle down and be able to get his breaking stuff over. The prayerful hands of a... Dear sweet mom, as she watches her son give up a base hit to right. Runners again at the corners with two out. A solid single for Stephen Claybrook. Not a bad pitch, good location. He just handled it nicely. That was a good piece of hitting by Claybrook. I mean, just because he wasn't starting today doesn't mean he's not a quality player. And the only reason he was out of the lineup because and he couldn't get back in because the guy ahead of him was playing so well. As big as that double play was that Robert Lewis pulled off to close the bottom of the first inning, this is a huge situation for Chris Korn and this young Kansas team to get out of this as Billy Harlan steps in. Harlan flied to center, leading off the bottom half of the first inning. Got away 
from Niemeyer. The throw is in time. They got him. Oh, what a play by Jeff Niemeyer. No problem with that instep. And do you think Chris Corn's dad enjoyed that play by his catcher? Oh, ho. Great play by Neymar. Gets in front of the ball, blocks it, hustles over. Here comes Corn. The throw. Got him. That's the College World Series, folks. Remember the great hits, the spectacular plays, the winning runs. Catch all the excitement of the 1993 College World Series with the official souvenir program. To purchase your copy, send $7 to NCAA Programs, 904 North Broadway, Lexington, Kentucky, 40505. Please allow four to six weeks for delivery. This message provided by the NCAA. Concentration. Control. When you compete, you need control. When you use drugs, you lose control. Do you really want to do that? If you or someone you know needs help or information concerning drug abuse, call this toll-free number, 1-800-662-HELP. This message provided by the NCAA. Texas A&M leading Kansas one to nothing through two innings. You look at this last play, it typifies this Kansas Jayhawk team this year. Now here's a curveball in the dirt, and Neymar gets out and gets his chest in front of the ball. He's a little bit surprised that the runner's coming, and Korn, to his credit, is there in time to put on the tag. Nice play by both players. There's Marsha and Don. They're pretty pumped up. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, the tomahawk trap. These fans, they could not get enough tickets for, in Lawrence to get here. This is almost always sold out. Only 150 tickets are made available to the teams, each individual schools to, to come. They quickly sold out. And a number of people made the trip, about a three-and-a-half-hour jaunt down the interstate to make it to this year's College World Series. First-ever event for Kansas. Brian Turney leading it off here in the top half of the third inning. Turney, the designated hitter today, just a freshman, appeared in 43 games this year. A fine infielding prospect for the future. Jeff Granger took a few warm up tosses during that long inning that really produced nothing. In fact, you look at Texas A&M, they have five hits, they have one walk in two innings, but only one run. So Kansas really in great shape given the types of innings that they've had to endure. They're dodging some bullets, no question. Looks like Granger's come out a little bit more focused and a little bit more fire in his eyes. Looks like he's trying to work a little bit more quickly than he has. Get the ball, throw it kind of thing. Look at the batting averages of the opposition. 193, and there's a punch out. Coming up later tonight, the NCAA College World Series continues live on ESPN. Fifth seed at LSU, their sixth visit to Omaha in the last eight years. A blueprint for success. Skip Bertman's team against Long Beach State. Dave Snow was here back in 1991. Great game coming up tonight. Mike Patrick, Steve Garvey will call it for you. Ranger took something off that pitch. And uh, it's a swinging strike for Jeff Berblinger. Berblinger fouled out to right to start the ball game on the opening pitch. We may hear the chant Rock Chalk Jayhawk before the day is done. Check swing, they'll appeal and they'll punch him out. First base umpire Don January in his second College World Series makes the call. Now these things are always uh, iffy at best, these check swings, because on TV replays it always looks like the guy goes. But I'll tell you what, that's a pretty good uh, job by the hitter. I don't think he went, but my vote doesn't count. 
Our umpires today, William LaRue from West Springfield, Mass, Don January. Tony Thompson and Ron Graham. All have been in the business a long time. Graham in his third College World Series down the third base side. Monroe walked and was picked off by Granger back in the first. I think Jeff Granger had a talk with his pitching coach in between innings because he is definitely throwing quicker. He's getting the ball, getting the sign, and coming after these guys. He's not trying to finesse them. He says, here it comes, hit it, boys. I mean, Granger absolutely picked it up a notch in that inning. Blowing away two Jayhawks. It's one nothing middle of the third. To be king of the ring, you have to beat one of the toughest hombres in the WWF. Then you have to beat another and another all in a single night. Eight superstar wrestlers bang. Here's the part of this message I like the most. The ears. I like the toes. And the nose. This part. Here's the part I hate. Babies are being born with part of the brain or spinal cord exposed or even missing. But if you start on a multivitamin that contains folic acid before you become pregnant, you could increase your chances of starting a whole healthy baby. Now another good part? Right here. <laughs> We move to the bottom half of the third inning here in Omaha, Nebraska, Johnny Rosenblatt Stadium, the NCAA College World Series underway. A vendor's delight each year, an economic boom to the center of commerce here in the heartland, Omaha, Nebraska. No better place to be in the month of June, is there? No, sir. You like baseball, this is where you want to be. Billy Harlan grounds to third to open the inning. Brett Wilhelm making the play, and there's one away. The Kansas Jayhawks, you talk about difficulty. They had to endure rain in every one of their victories in Knoxville, Tennessee, and look who they had to beat. Fresno State, a proven power. Clemson, another proven power. And then winning the game in an emotional 10th inning, getting past Fresno State by a score of 3-2. to two. I mean, a very difficult road for the team from Kansas. Here is Robert Harris. Harris the shortstop walked and scored on curl single back in the first. The only run scored today. It's been pretty much your typical college baseball game. Right? A couple of errors, a little base on balls, but then some great plays, outstanding defensive plays to get out of jams. Rounded to short, Dan Rude feels a cleaner. Two gone. One of the many differences about this game, the college game, to Major League Baseball is that the routine play isn't always that routine. I think you can take that out of your vocabulary most of the time in the College World Series because even though you expect them to make the plays, they just don't make them all the time. And sometimes the routine plays are the tough plays for these guys. But I'll tell you one thing, they sure try. Huh? Oh, you bet. As proven by Niemeyer to close out the second with that magnificent play behind home plate. Here's Brian Thomas. Thomas singled to right back in the first. I'll say one thing about Corn, he works very quickly, and, and I'll tell you, as a defender, you really like that. It keeps you on your toes. You never get flat footed with this guy out there because he gets a ball and fires. Not surprising that Brian Thomas would have gotten a base hit in his first College World Series at bat. That one's chopped down the first base side, fielded by Bill Hickey, the AM first base coach. Hickey, longtime assistant, along with Jim Lawler, the pitching coach to Mark Johnson. And Mark Johnson does patrol the third base side for Texas A&M. He's always been there, much like Ron Polk, one of his mentors. Likes to be a part of it. Another hot smash to second. Herblinger makes the play unassisted, and the inning is over. Nothing across for the Aggies. Through three, it's one to nothing. Reincarnation. The belief you can come back is just about anything. <laughs> Oh. Mm -hmm. 
Why do some guys so have all the luck? Try a less filling beer with a lot more taste. Bud Dry. Because while luck may run out. Happy birthday, Grandma. For me! True refreshment won't. In Jurassic Park, there's only one place to go to satisfy a Tyrannosaurus-sized hunger. McDonald's. Where now, something big is happening to your favorite extra value meal. What is it? Dino-sizing. For just a little more, dino-size your extra value meal with dino-size fries and a large drink in a free Jurassic Park collector cup. Dino-sizing. A value of enormous proportions. Because what you want is what you get at McDonald's today. I should have brought a bigger truck. Well, the Montreal Canadiens did it in overtime again in Game 2 to even the series at 1-1. So Game 3, Los Angeles Saturday night right here on ESPN, 8.30 Eastern, 5.30 Pacific. See you there, Saturday night hockey. Darren Dryford of Wichita State, a top round pick himself, congratulating Jeff Granger yesterday upon hearing the news that he was selected by the Kansas City Royals. A great relief, not only for Granger, but for all of the coaches at this year's College World Series, Fred, because normally the series would already be underway, about two days deep, and then they would have to endure whether they had gone or not. Yeah, that's a very good idea to have it before the series even starts. You know, these guys are under enough pressure as it is playing for a national title, but to have to worry about where you're going to go in the draft as well uh, is a little bit overwhelming sometimes. John Wycheck, the first baseman, leading it off, and you notice the the change in the strategy really of pitching to the Kansas players and really attacking more. That's what Granger did an inning ago. Yeah, he's definitely. Uh, it, quickened up the pace of his delivery. I mean, if you watch him now, he's almost like he's quick pitching. So it's something that uh, probably his pitching coach Jim Waller spotted. He was a little bit too deliberate, and he said something to him, and now he's a rock back fire. Wycheck fouled out to Scott Smith at third back in the first inning. In talking with Lawler today and with Mark Johnson, they both indicated that Granger gets more freedom than any of the other members of the Texas A&M staff and you see him fooled on the breaking ball and he strikes him out. Now that's three three out of the last four that he's nailed. The last four I beg your pardon that he struck out. Here's a, a slider to a, a left hand hitter and most of the KU hitters are right handed today and I guarantee you this is not much fun facing a, a kid with this kind of stuff like Granger has being left handed. That's a tough slider down and away to him. Here's Jeff Niemeyer. Kind of makes me glad I'm up here in the booth. <laughs> 62 RBIs to go along with that 377 batting average and nine home runs. Niemeyer is a, you talk, you look at the numbers and you say, well, he has to play at the next level. You never know how far any of these young men may go. The truth is, he's just a great college player. Let him be that. And that's exactly what he's been. Lifted into right center and taken by Brian Thomas. Most of these young kids all think they can play at the next level, but in truth, this may be their Shangri La. It may not get any better than this for most of these competitors. Yeah, you make a good point, Tim, in that uh, this is the pinnacle of, of a lot of these kids' careers, and even though they have aspirations of going to the big leagues, uh, maybe a handful of them out of the quality of the guys that are here now will get there. Uh, that's not very good odds. Here is Josh Igo. He walked back in the second. But believe me, they'll be talking about this event 20 years from now when they're telling their kids, oh, I was in the College World Series. Just the other night I heard you sound just that way. Just like me. <laughs> <laughs> and now suddenly Chris Korn, uh, maybe he learned something from Granger. That breaking ball is up in the air and sent to Claybrook deep and right, and it gets by him. The sun field is right field. It may have been a factor that time for Stephen Claybrook. 
And I go as a board with a double. You see the glasses there. I'm not certain that his glasses were ever brought down. Well, he was concentrating on the ball and it was spinning towards the line. Anytime a right-handed hitter hits a ball to right field, it's always going to spin to the line. You see he does have the shades down. He's got a bead on it. He just doesn't have quite enough glove to get there. Unfortunately, he didn't get back to the fence quickly enough. He kind of drifted, and with this wind, it always changes here at, at Rosenblatt. Kind of blew the ball away from him. Here's Rory Tarquinio, who reached on an arrow by Lewis, you'll recall, and that one sent again into shallow right. Gonzalez goes back this time, but he's called off by Claybrook, and the inning is over. The sun field and right comes into play again at Rosenblatt. Now, the more things change, the more they stay the same. So does the score. It's one to nothing. Susie Hamilton, U.S. middle distance runner. What was good enough yesterday just isn't good enough today. You can't hang on to old victory. That's what performance is all about. That's why I like this stuff so much. It's not the old way of doing things. Shampoo and conditioner in one, Pert Plus. It gives me the results I'm after. Soft, manageable hair, but not a lot of fuss. Who needs the old way of getting there? Hurt Plus, also in dandruff control. You are here. She has the traveler's checks here. Uh-oh. Well, how about American Express traveler's checks for two? The only checks either of you can use. Don't leave home without them. Tire foam protectant from Armor All. One spray. Old tires look great. Kind of makes you wish we made car foam. Tire foam from Armor All. We move to the bottom of the fourth. Texas A&M is leading Kansas one to nothing. Don't forget, ESPN's exclusive coverage of the Stanley Cup Final continues tomorrow. Game three from Los Angeles. The Canadiens and the Kings are tied at a game apiece. Wayne Gretzky is trying to lead L.A. to their first ever championship. And Patrick Waugh looking to hang another banner in Montreal's fabled forum. John Saunders and the entire ESPN hockey crew are on hand for all of that. Make your plans to be with us. John Curl waves at a fastball on the low inside portion of the plate, and it's 0-1. It was Curl that had that seeing eye single to left to drive in Harris for the only run of the ball game. A well placed base hit, base hit to give Texas A&M the lead at one to nothing, and that's exactly where we are now. Both pitchers struggled early, particularly Corn going to a full count on five separate occasions. Yet both have worked out of it, particularly Granger, who has uh, sent a message that he's worthy of being a top-round draft pick of the Kansas City Royals. Yeah, Corn has settled down nicely now. He's starting to get his breaking stuff over. He's starting to throw his change up a little bit more often. Lifted to center. Monroe comes in. Uh, he was thinking about that one for a while as well. The wind blowing the ball in today and as you mentioned that play in right field for Claybrook was as much wind as it was sun to close out the fourth inning. Now you, as an outfielder and an infielder at Rosenblatt you have to check the flag in between innings because the wind changes here rather quickly. Here's Robert Lewis 0 for 1 today grounded into a double play to win the first. In fact two big double plays and a tremendous save by Niemeyer behind the plate have, has had, have had as much to do with Chris Korn hanging around as long as he has. Aggies with five hits. Yet only one run. And the longer the Kansas Jayhawks stay into this game, the more confidence they're going to build up and the tougher they're going to be in the late innings. There's Dave Bingham. Coached at Emporia State, won an NAIA title back in 1978. He played there for Larry Koschel, now the head coach at Oklahoma. And of course, it was Larry that 
Left Emporia to allow Bingham to have that chance. What a great play at shortstop. Oh my, Dan Rude picking up the short hop and throwing him out. Here's a bullet <laughs> off the bat, and Rude plays it like it's no problem. A little Ole action there. <laughs> Shows a strong arm throwing to first base. He's a pitcher as well, Rude is, so he does have a good arm. Here's Rob Trimble. Trimble singled and was thrown out trying to steal by Niemeyer in the second. Corn raised his glove, but is fielded nicely by Berglinger, and the inning is over. Nothing across for Texas A&M as the pitchers have settled down here at Rosenblatt Stadium. There's no place on earth that I'd rather be than out in the open where it's all plain to see. It's gonna get done, it's up to you and me. Come on and head for the mountains of Bush. Come on and head for the mountains of Bush. Here. I got a new taste that's pure delight. New Bingo Sour Cream and Onion Light. That's right. Rich sour cream and tangy onion. Mmm, that taste is really something because the dip is in the chips. So delicious on your lips. Look, compare Pringles to regular chips. Pringles have less fat and they're less greasy too. The proof's in front of you. So grab a bunch of this, not that. And get a whole lot of taste and less of the fat. New Bingo Sour Cream and Onion Light. That's right. Once you pop, you, 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 and you, you can't stop. Top-ranked boxing, super middleweight champion James Lights Out Tony battles Glenn Thomas. I'm the best, the best. Plus live coverage of the Foreman Morrison weigh-in. Top-ranked boxing, Sunday afternoon, live on ESPN. Rosenblatt Stadium, it's not just a field of dreams for the players. That's often terms overused but in truth it means a lot to the coaches as well. Listen to Dave Bingham after six years at Kansas. I've driven by or around this stadium probably 50 times in my life in the last 20 years in the Midwest and you know I never saw this stadium in the same light as I do as I did last night when that bus drove by and we had a little meeting with our ball club last night and I shared that with the club and every one of them said the same thing. Our second baseman you know they discussed it at dinners. One of the guys asked me said uh, are you nervous? And he said, nah, not a chance. And we drove by the stadium last night, and somebody looked at him and said, are you nervous? He says, you bet I am. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we could tell yesterday at practice that uh, he was stressing fundamentals. They were one of the few teams that we saw actually have a full-scale drill yesterday, and all of them had an hour. Most of them took BP, but he had his team working on... Uh, uh, on plays at the plate, it plays at third, just the fundamentals of the game. And he does that every day with his ball club. Brent Wilhelm takes this one into center and deep. And in the gap and trouble for Texas A&M. Thomas comes up with it and Wilhelm will hold it second with a double. Well, Thomas was really playing. And with the wind blowing in, I guess you could understand why, but Wilhelm got all of that one. He has a fastball and Willem just crushes it. He got a base hit last time, so he's figured out Granger thus far. Fastball up and away, goes with it nicely, drives it over the head of Thomas. Thomas picks it up, makes a nice throw to the cutoff man, but there was no play at third. Although this throws a little high. It's not as if Thomas would have had a play even had he been playing more deeply. But it certainly gave Wilhelm an opportunity to think about three, though he didn't uh, didn't make use of it. He played it safe. Well, he's played behind Granger enough to know that probably not a whole lot of balls are hit over his head. Yeah. So he's going to take most of the balls in front of him and make the other team hit the ball over his head. Dan Rude grounded into a double play. Lewis to curl with the bases loaded to win the second. Oh! And yet another example of college baseball. The percentage here would be with Rude to go ahead and lay down the bunt and get the runner over to third. 
Well, Rude, uh, last time he he batted was with bases loaded, and he tried to push a bunt with one out with the bases loaded. So in this situation, you know he's mm -hmm. going to play bunting. Absolutely. It is not beyond the realm of possibility that with one out and a runner at second, that you'd see the bunt. And they're thinking pass ball. They're thinking anything at this point against Granger. Chopped to third. Lewis in. Holds the runner and makes the good throw. Well, this play here, you know, they, they Bingham just tried to catch uh, the Aggies napping a little bit. Tried to catch them coming in on the bunt. And hopefully that the third baseman was going to come in and then let his, his hitter chop it over his head. But... If they stay back, which they did, you get burned because you didn't get to advance a runner. He didn't hit the ball to the right side of the diamond, which would advance a runner. Uh, it's a gamble, and it backfired. Ranger rocking along after four and a third. He's surrendered three hits, two walks, no runs, four strikeouts, all of them consecutive strikeouts. Here's Turney, who was called out on strikes, one of those victims. Talking with Coach Bingham before the game, he mentioned to us that he was really going to take more chances, a few more liberties when he had guys on base because he didn't figure to get that many guys on base. So they were going to do some interesting things to try to score some runs. Ranger coming in with a heat but missing inside. It's 2 0. That is Wilhelm down at second. He doubled. To open the inning. Lace to third and off the glove of Lewis. Wilhelm rounding third. Bingham will send him. We're tied at one in the College World Series game one. Brian Turney, bottom of the order. How many times do we see it in College World Series play? An extra leadoff man in this instance. Yeah, he gets a 2-0 fastball, and you can see him hook that bat around, and he hit the ball so hard that the third baseman, Lewis, didn't even have a chance to get his glove up. By the time he gets his glove up, the ball's by him. Here's Jeff Burblinger, and he takes a strike. But it would be interesting to see if uh, Fedora would have cut oh. that ball. There are so many questions that Texas A&M fans could raise given the outcome of today's game based on what happened to Lee Fedora prior to the start of the day's game. Not just because of his loss individually, but what it did to the defensive makeup of this team. Four position changes necessitated after the loss of Lee Fedora. Turney gets the single in the RBI. Goes to second on the throw, and he's aboard right now with one down, representing the lead run against Jeff Granger. Burblinger fouled to right. Trimble made the catch to start the game and then was called out on strikes back in the third. You know, it's interesting with power pitchers so many times that third trip, third opportunity to get a look means a lot to a hitter. Jam Demon Berlinger was in on the plate. And Granger smoked him. Fifth strikeout of the game for Jeff Granger. Here's a pitch from Granger. Heat inside. That's a, that's a cut fastball. He does throw that. It looks kind of like a slider, but it just cuts in a parallel to the ground, and it freezes Burblinger for the second time. Hey, right side. You may not be particularly happy with the call, but we must point this out. At college level, at this level, you will see a liberal strike zone. They will give, for the most part, the corners in the college game. Here's Daryl Monroe. He struck out swinging you in the third. And then walked and was picked off, you'll recall, back in the first inning. 
Plus, it helps to be a number one draft choice as well. You, you <laughs> might get a few more corners. Think so? <laughs> I recall a game played here back in 1990 when Georgia won the College World Series. Stanford was playing Georgia. Mike Mussina himself, a power pitcher, struck out 10 of 12 Georgia batters. Then when they came around the third time, they lit him up. He gave up 11 runs, or there was an 11-run inning of which he recorded eight of those surrendered, and they blew him out. Mussina had just been drafted a number one draft pick. Well, by the time you come around for your third time, there should be no more surprises from the pitcher. You should have seen everything that he has. And on the hands, and Monroe fists it past the dugout on the Texas A&M side. Once you've figured out the pattern of a pitcher, then it gets down to execution. Does he put the ball where he wants to, when he wants to, and do you have enough wherewithal to be able to handle that pitch when he does. And really that's all it gets down to after you figured out what he throws. An opportunity to chat with Jeff Granger yesterday Fred and you talk about a class individual. He many difficult situations in a young amateur career. Quarterback of a unbeaten Texas A&M football team yet microscoped and given really the, a lot of fault for Texas A&M's offensive problems in football. Gets a concussion in week eight of the season, is replaced by Corey Pullig, and suddenly Pullig wins the job. He comes back, they go to a bowl game, and he's cast aside. All of that after he had just been cut by the USA team as a part of that last cut. It's been a roller coaster ride for him, but it's a quality ending as of yesterday as a number one round draft pick of the Royal. So then I guess you could say he's trying to scramble his way out of this. <laughs> He was known as a scrambling quarterback, no question about that. And the, the point is, where football was concerned, he made the plays to win. There you see it. Just drafted yesterday. He made the plays to win, but again, you know, the alumni in football, they can be tough. He, bet. They want you to win by three touchdowns, not just one. Fastball again. He does not get on around on it, does Monroe. And the Sunfield becomes a factor again for Claybrook, but he does make the catch. A high sky today in Omaha. We're tied at one in the College World Series in the middle of the fifth. George Foreman, an American institution. Tommy Morrison, the up-and-coming slugger from the nation's heartland, two symbols of the American spirit, headed for a collision. Let's get ready. This is going to be a star-spangled battle. See the two heaviest hitters in boxing clash for the WBO Heavyweight Championship Monday, June 7th, live on pay-per-view. Recently, an object was sighted. It was big. Bigger than big. Huge, huge, large, astronomically big. Big would be an understatement. Very huge. Some guy. Big. Huge. When it arrives, you better not be alone. <laughs> Bigfoot. Pizza Hut. From Pizza Hut. Two square feet of pizza. 21 slices on a tasty new crust. $10.99 for up to three toppings. It's bigger than Pizza Pizza. Bigfoot from Pizza Hut. A legendary value. One to one, our scores. We move to the bottom half of the fifth inning. Tim Brando along with Fred Lynn. Happy to have you with us. The NCAA College World Series underway on ESPN with our game this afternoon. As you look at Dave Bingham and his dugout. Six years at Kansas after 11 times being a district coach of the year at Emporia State, as I mentioned. Uh, got here the hard way, as did this team, Texas A&M. For years, they made it to the regional final. In fact, in 89, they were number one. Chuck Knobloch and John Byington, outstanding offensive team. Yet Ben McDonald shut them down. And LSU came to the World Series that year. Scott Smith leading off the bottom half of the fifth inning. Smith singled the center in the third and was thrown out trying to score. On that short wild pitch, Jeff Niemeyer made an outstanding play. 
fact, there are two plays: the Lewis play, the double play to get Texas A&M and Granger out of a bases-loaded jam, and then that play by Niemeyer. Two magnificent saves for both Corn and Granger this afternoon. But to their credit, they fought through their early problems, made good use of the help they got. Again, not quite getting around on the fastball. There is some action in the bullpen, but it's just, I think, loosening up. No one that's uh, Steve Titterington is down there for. Kansas. They don't expect to use him today. I think he's just loosening up. You know, in the College World Series, you, you win a game or you lose a game, you still have to wait two days before you play again. These guys have been used to playing in regionals where, you know, pitching depth, you're, you're usually pitching an important game. You're playing one game, maybe t a doubleheader. You know, those regionals, those are tough. That really tests your pitching staffs, and sometimes the pitching staffs kind of limp in here. Mm -hmm. Horn with easily his best fastball of the day blowing away Scott Smith. Horn's definitely settled down from the shaky start in the first couple of innings. 88 mile per hour fastball as he records his first strikeout. But that 88 mile an hour fastball in itself isn't that great a pitch but he's setting it up now with his off speed stuff and so that 88 looks more like 93. Mm -hmm. Eric Gonzalez fouled out to Wilhelm in the second. This is another one of those guys they call them the Twin Towers, the middle middle infielders for Texas A&M. Gonzalez, all of five four and 160 pounds, but surprising power. For both he and Robert Harris, guys get around on the ball and uh, and can send you deep more than just warning track power. These guys have. Yeah, yeah, Gonzalez has eight home runs, and you better smile, partner, when you call them those twin towers. <laughs> <laughs> Three fifty-seven and six RBIs in the Central One Regional. Part of the. All tournament team and as I mentioned 18 chances without an error came up big defensively. We're talking about the Sun Field in right and that will be bothersome for every right fielder that plays in the series when you have the clouds in the sky. But uh, partly sunny skies here in Omaha. Yeah you, this is a really tough right field to play no question that sun can definitely overpower you. Speaking of being overpowered, in the fifth inning, we'll always have a fifth inning flashback at this year's College World Series. My fondest memory was the day I got drafted. It was also a day that I went uh, three for four against Arkansas and drove in to win and run. So, uh, you know, it was... It was very good day in my life, and uh, College World Series was a very good experience. Claybrook steps in and slaps a single to left with two down here in the bottom half of the fifth inning. You, know, you think back to Will Clark and that great team in 1985. I, I believe that this is the best field at the NCAA College World Series since 85. When Will Clark, Rafael Palmero, Bobby Thickpin, and Jeff Brantley were all a part of Mississippi State's team, yet they finished third. Oklahoma State had Incavilia, Desenzo, Farrell, and more, and they finished fifth. And Ruffin was pitching at Texas. I mean, this was a loaded series back in 85, and Miami won it with a bullpen catcher named Greg Elena hitting three home runs to be the most valuable player, and he never saw a day at any training camp. This goes to show you, you never know what can happen in this series. You can throw all those records and, and statistics out the window. They don't mean a whole lot here. Stephen Claybrook, uh, the aforementioned speed, good for 22 of 28 attempts this year. 
<laughs> for Mark Johnson's team. Billy Harlan is at the plate. He's 0 for 2. Fly to center and grounded to third, back in the third. Well, no time like the present to use some of that speed. I mean, they've got to manufacture a few runs themselves. Chris Korn, as we mentioned, is velocity right up around 88 miles per hour so far. He's given up five hits, a walk. But he's retired the last eight men prior to that base hit by Claiborne. That one gets away from Neymar. So a string of eight consecutive outs leads to the Claybrook single and now a wild pitch. And here's a pitch by Korn, a breaking ball in the dirt. And unlike his other efforts, Neymar tries to backhand this ball instead of putting his body in front of it. And he couldn't quite get the glove on it. Freddie, we've seen from the Texas A&M hitters today, whether right-handed or left-handed, a number of open stances, some of them very pronounced. But Mark Johnson doesn't mind. No, he doesn't care what you look like before you swing. It's when you swing. As he did there. And Harlan throws it to short, but they get out of the inning. Nice play by Dan Rube, and the inning is over. Chris Korn through five, tied at one. Presenting the Ryobi Detail Sander. It gets into all those small, tight spaces where other sanders can't reach. And with special add-on accessories that also prepares surfaces for painting. Scrapes paint and adhesive off glass, wood, and metal. Even polishes and buffs to a brilliant finish. In fact, you can use the Ryobi Detail Sander any place your imagination takes you. Recently, an object was sighted. It was big. Bigger than big. Huge, huge, large, astronomically big. Big would be an understatement. Very huge. Some guy. Big, huge. When it arrives, you better not be alone. Bigfoot. Pizza Hut. From Pizza Hut. Two square feet of pizza. 21 slices on a tasty new crust. $10.99 for up to three toppings. It's bigger than Pizza Pizza. Bigfoot from Pizza Hut. A legendary value. Why get an inferior foam shave when you could have the best? Why choose ordinary lubrication when you could have the real? Why settle for average protection against razor irritation when you could have something more advanced, giving you a closer shave with less irritation than foam? Edge Gel. Ultimate closeness. Ultimate comfort. That's the edge. We've played five full innings here at Rosenblatt Stadium. It is a 1-1 ball game, 1-4-0 for Kansas, 1-6-1 for Texas A&M. The top seed, the Aggies, the eighth seed, the Jayhawks. And both pitchers have settled down to make this a very nice first game to open the 93 series. Brand spanking new scoreboard in left field here at Rosenblatt Stadium, a part of the $8 million worth of improvements that have been done to this AAA ballpark since 1989 and due in large part to the private sector. So many people have done so much to keep the World Series here. You know, 44 years ago, not too many people were uh, bidding for the right to have the College World Series, but Omaha was the proud beneficiary. Now they're doing can to keep it. In 89, New Orleans and Minnesota both came forward and made a plea to try to pick up the College World Series and Omaha and the private sector, the local organizing committee, headed up part of the Rosenblatt family, Steve Rosenblatt, Jack Sr. And, and Jr., organized a group that uh, would rival that of any bowl committee you'd find anywhere across the country to help this mid-major city in the heartland keep the College World Series. John Wycheck, who struck out swing, leads off the sixth. Former Texas A&M Aggie. Here's the slider. There's the pitch that he struck on out against last time, and he's having trouble keeping that front shoulder in a slider. That's not there. That's a 
dangerous, dangerous pitch for Wycheck to handle. He is really being handcuffed today by Granger. Well, to hit Granger as a left-hand hitter, you have to do one of two things. You have to take away one of his pitches. Now, if I'm in this situation, I'm going to take away his slider because I think that's the best pitch to a left-hander. So I'm going to look for the slider away until I get two strikes. Then I'm going to handle the fastball inside. But until that time, he's not going to make me look bad on that slider away. That one's fouled out of play by Niemeyer. By the way, Granger now with six strikeouts after the K of Wycheck. If you're the sacrificial left-hander in the lineup against a tough left-handed pitcher, you're the only guy in there, everybody else is right-handed, you don't want to be made to look bad, so you're going to take away that slider if you can. That one's up in the zone to Niemeyer, who flied to right in the first and then flied to center in the fourth. He's 0 for 2. His big play, the defensive one, to save a run. Lace to left for a base hit. Jeff Niemeyer with his first College World Series base hit with one out here in the sixth. Here's Niemeyer. Well, you don't get to see him here, but there you see the result of his swing. Look like it, to me it was a, a changeup that was a little bit up. Niemeyer soft on his front foot, doesn't have any problems there. Boy, you can see him having some problems getting out of the box, so. It definitely hurts him to run. That may be the biggest problem for him based on that injury. The fractured foot, which is his left foot, happened in practice too. Sort of a weird, goofy injury. Simply happened in BP, yeah, stepping a, into the ball. On a swing of all things, uh, you didn't hit the ball off himself or anything. He just kind of had a, a missed stride, I guess. Kind of a freak injury. Josh Igo, the hitter, doubled to right in the fourth. Walked in the second. He's one for one on the afternoon. Getting to the point in a game where though the score is one to one. And the line score reads with 11 hits for both teams. Both of these pitchers have thrown their fair share. So you can bet that they'll be watching a pitch count in the next few innings. It's not unusual, though, in college baseball to see a pitcher, particularly one like Granger, throw in the neighborhood of 135 to 145 pitches. More of a tendency to give it to your bulldog and let him go. At oh, he, this level. He's their best guy. I mean, you know, win or lose with your best guy most of the time. As an example, Korn, who had so many 3 2 counts early in the game through five innings, has thrown 92 pitches. Granger now up to 80, as you see Jim Lawler flashing in the signals to Rob Trimble, his catcher. Up in the strike zone and Gets caught up with that win, and field, Brian Thomas makes the get. Granger got away with one there. <laughs> He's pumped. Yeah, he, he didn't care that that ball was up. Actually, it's a good day to pitch up in the strike zone because the fly balls of this nature are going to be held in. I mean, this ball started off like it had some possibility to get out of the ballpark but the wind brought it back in Rory Tarquinio reached on an error by Lewis in the second and flied to right to Claybrook to win the fourth and I go was stranded at second See that wind as we mentioned. It's uh, beginning to swirl just a bit towards right. It's not unusual to see the the wind blow in for a day game and out for a night game. Lace to left, coming in to make the catch is Billy Harlan. Well placed and left. 
A solid shot off the bat of Tarquinio. We're tied at one as we move to the bottom of the sixth. Tire foam protectant from armor on. One spray, and even old tires look great. Kind of makes you wish we made car foam. Tire foam from armor on. Red Devil Enamel. You can always count on its durable finish. Harder than ordinary paints, its beauty lasts and lasts. Red Devil Enamel, for the finish of a lifetime. There is bracket two of the NCAA College World Series. Arizona State, second seeded to meet Wichita State tomorrow afternoon. Texas and Oklahoma State on ESPN tomorrow night. And coming up, Beach State and LSU. Terrific matchup between the 49ers and Tigers. Two outstanding pitching coaches featured in that game. Dave Snow and Skip Bertman, perennial pitching teams. But in this year's case, Todd Walker will be on display. Over 400 he hit this year. Had a chance at the Triple Crown in the SEC. A magnificent sophomore. You'll be able to see it tonight. Steve Garvey joining Mike Patrick for the call. And we welcome Steve Garvey to the College World Series for the first time with ESPN. I'd welcome Mike, but he beats me in golf games every time he comes here. No, I, you know, you can't do that. Can't do that. No. And plus, he's a veteran. Off speed breaking ball, just missing outside. Two and one the count to Robert Harris. Harris with a chopper. Over to third, and Wilhelm has plenty of time. One down. At the beginning of the day, we talked of Kansas as a Cinderella story in a minefield of talent at this year's College World Series. To this point, they've handled the pressure of being here for the first time. You know, you're carrying a lot of pressure for a school as big as Kansas, this close to Omaha with all of the people coming over and, uh, and yet you've never been here you want to play well that first game and they have well it's very important for them to stay in the ball game in the early innings they were afraid to get blown out early and they tried to do Ryan Thomas got under that one a bit and again the wind blowing out towards right and it's gone you know, I just looked out during the half inning the wind was blowing out towards right. It had been blowing in just as aluminum made contact. The flag was limp. There was no wind at all. He just got it out of the ballpark. An inning ago, that doesn't make it. No, he hit it to the deepest part of the right center. It's about uh, probably 395 where the ball went out. And as you mentioned, the flag is blowing straight down right now. Thomas has a kind of an unusual swing. He really cocks, he really coils the bat. Kind of a, a little bit of an uppercut, but when the balls were in his zone, boy, he can really turn on it. That was not a home run stride, by the way, that he got started. <laughs> he didn't think it was going to make it either. No, he plays center field. He knows what the ball's doing today. He thought it might be off the wall, as we did. John Curl at the play. But that just tells you what we're talking about in terms of proves our point about this field and the swirling winds blowing in so long slightly out towards right in the last half inning and then suddenly it went limp just prior to that home run there it is yeah in the outfield it, you almost have to do it from every hitter just pick up a little grass and throw it above your head and see what it does and it gives you a pretty good idea here because the wind and the flag are true uh, if you look at it as blowing in, that's what the wind is going to be doing. There's no swirling effect here really in the outfield. So you have to check almost from hitter to hitter. Now Curl is aboard with the base on balls. And Niemeyer will come out to talk with his pitcher. First corn. Ryan Thomas with his 15th home run and his 54th RBI to give Texas A&M the 2-1 lead. There That's it is. a fastball right down the middle, and Corn uh, has been getting away with that pitch because he's been setting up with the breaking stuff, but not this time. And it just did make it. You could tell that Monroe, Daryl Monroe, the center fielder, was not giving up on it at all. Yeah, it looked like when he went back on it, he was drawing a beat on it as it was going to stay in the ballpark, but uh, the ball never slowed down. 
The good news, if there is some for Dave Bingham, given what's just happened to Chris Corn, is that he has gotten Corn deep, uh, deeply enough into the ball game that he can go with his number one or two options out of relief. To this point, Corn surrendering two runs and seven hits. And you see the pitch count now up to 103. A couple of walks, two strikeouts. And there are the two top options today, David Solt and David Meyer. Had had they not gotten into the middle innings, then there would have been some major questions for Dave Bingham. He just threw his bat at that one. Goes right to second, and Berglinger makes the play. <laughs> well, you rarely see that. Robert Lewis just threw the bat. Not very kind to that Easton aluminum. Yeah, well, that was a hit and run play, and if you don't swing on a hit and run, you you will draw the, the ire of your coach. Here's the break. Just making sure the pitch goes to home because it's a hit and run. It's not a stolen base attempt. That's a great <laughs> job. I mean, that ball is a curveball down and away, and he, he just threw the bat at it. And that's throwing the head of the bat on the ball. You bet. And what are the chances that Bermlinger would go over there and that the ball would actually go there? Very easily, that could have gone right into the hole that he had vacated. Because of the uh, run and hit situation. Well, actually, KU caught a break because that ball, if he throws a bat at it and misses it, it's a, a curveball in the dirt. Neymar is going to have no chance of throwing the runner out. So KU caught a break there. Rob Trumbull at the plate. Places it to center. Base hit. In comes Curl, and the Aggies lead it 3 to 1 in the sixth. Trimble now two for three with an RBI. Well, they got what they wanted out of that hit run situation. Advance the runner. Here's a breaking ball. Good breaking ball down low, but Trimble, as all left handers can do, can hit the low ball, drives it up the middle, and once again, that outfield grass comes into play because the outfield has no chance to throw the runner out. Here's Scott Smith. He struck out swinging, leading off the fifth. Single to center in the third. Fastball on the outside corner at the knees, 0 and 1. The Aggies got one in the first, could have had more. Two double plays and a tremendous save by Niemeyer. Saved Korn from real trouble in the first three innings. But now the Aggies have pushed two across here in the sixth to take a three to one lead. To second. And the force play will end it. And Berglinger to Rude to get out of it. So Horn gets through six, but the Aggies get two and lead it three to one. We'll be back. Where would you be without Weedy? The same affordable quality that's made us a household name for the past 20 years goes into every weed eater gas and electric hedge trimmer. Where would you be without weed eater? Hey, Mom. I'm home. The same affordable quality that's made us a household name for the past 20 years goes into every weed eater gas and electric edger. I don't need some fancy aftershave to tell me I'm a man. And I don't need some expensive cologne to make time with the ladies. I use Skin Bracer. It smells great. It also cools my skin, tones it up, and takes care of it after a good close shave. I don't need anything more. Confidence is very sexy, don't you think? Skin Bracer aftershave, more than a percent. By men and... This week on Speed Week, we'll have highlights of IMSA's Camel Grand Prix from Lime Rock, plus the latest news in the world of motorsports. Speed Week with 10 years of the best motorsports coverage, tomorrow night at 7.30 Eastern. Texas A&M leading Kansas by a score of 3-1. to one. Top of the seventh, we talk so much about giving yourself up, and you have to do it in this game, and that's what happened in the last inning that really set Texas A&M up to get that third run. Yeah, here's a hit and run play, and, and they did get done what they wanted to, and they advanced the runner. Nice piece of hitting there. I mean, <laughs> that's what you call throwing the bat on the ball. 
Harris just throws the bat at a, a curveball in the dirt, makes contact. Kind of a bad break for the Aggies there because probably wouldn't, Niemeyer probably wouldn't be able to throw him out anyway, but they did advance a runner, and Trimble knocks him in with a base hit. So Jeff Granger now, who frankly has gotten out of a few jams in the last couple of innings. He got on a real streak in the second, third, and fourth. Then Kansas started coming around to his fastball. And Brent Wilhelm leads it off here in the seventh. Now with a two-run lead, we'll see uh, if there's a little more giddy-up in that fastball. And we've been talking a lot about Granger and his abilities, but we did mention that KU as a team is hitting 320. So these guys can handle the bats. Uh, it's to Granger's credit that he's kept them down this long for just one run and five hits. Trimble is going to have to come out and talk with Jeff Granger. College World Series starts have not been kind to number one draft picks in the past, particularly in recent memory. I mentioned Musina from Stanford against Georgia, giving up an 11 spot in the sixth. And of course, Georgia went on to win the College World Series that year, beating Oklahoma State. Ben McDonald never won here. Hard to believe. Top round draft pick of the Baltimore Orioles did record one save in his first outing. He gave up four earned runs and a 5 2 loss. Sometimes the focal point, the number one player taken in a given draft, though he was the fifth player taken in the first round, the pressure does shift to that particular player. Plus, you know what else it does to him is it pumps up the other team. I mean, they know the guy's number one and they say, hey, you have feather in our cap if we beat the number one draft choice. Here is Dan Rude with Wilhelm aboard. And Wilhelm, who had given Rangers some trouble with a couple of base hits, won a double, is now on with a base on balls, and Dan Rude is at the plate. Thinking bunt. Or at least showing bunt. Root grounded into a double play, grounded to Lewis with Wilhelm at second and none out back in the fifth. And there's Chris Clemens. Not very serious right now in the bullpen, but believe me, he'll heat up a bit more briskly if Kansas can get something going here. There are no less than three potential number ones on this staff, this Texas A&M staff. Granger not being the only first rounder taken yesterday. Trimble's already been out to chat with him once, and again, he's down in the count. Two and one. Mark Johnson may be a bit more liberal with Granger than he would be with most, but uh, he certainly has more options. He could use as many pitchers as anyone, perhaps more than any other team in the College World Series. He could go to almost anyone he so chooses. They have great depth. I mean, that's what got them here, obviously, was their pitching staff. Uh, they don't do it with just one guy with Granger. I mean, they have a number of people that are fine pitchers on this ball club. And Mark Johnson isn't afraid to bring any of them in there. Trey Moore is another one who also is a fine hitter. In fact, many times has been a designated hitter. He's been a dual purpose performer for Mark Johnson. Here's the 2 1. Scores again. Boy, they just can't get that bump down. In every attempt, they have not come through trying to move the runners that way. 2 and 2 with no one out. And a runner on first here in the top of the seventh. There are the soft paws. More Kelly Wanch, the other. Tremendous velocity for him. Yeah, all of these guys throw the, 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 the 90 mile an hour range, and they all have great breaking stuff and change the speed. So 
It's no day at the beach when any of these guys step onto the mound. Dan Rude uh, making it difficult on Granger here. First he gets behind in the count, does Granger, and now he's beginning to foul him off. I think that uh, maybe Dave, Coach Dave Bingham should just let Dan Root swing away because every time he's come up, he's been in a bunting situation. He hasn't bunted yet, so maybe I ought to just let him hit. Very frustrating to a pitcher when you're making good pitches and they keep nagging you with those foul balls. When you're a power pitcher and you're getting to the bottom of the lineup, you want to blow these guys away. I mean, when they start making you pitch five, six, seven, eight pitches, uh, it doesn't set too well with these guys. Plus, he's already at the 94 pitch total. Lays it down with two strikes. No one's covering, but Granger beats him. But going all the way to third is Wilhelm. Boy, what an athletic play by Granger there. Laid it down. That surprised everyone with two strikes. The only play really was for Granger to do it himself. And did he ever? This is a great play. This is what you see in the College World Series. Here's a fastball eye high, and Rude finally gets one down. The first baseman comes over, and he's in the way. And a, just a great athletic play by Jeff Granger. The old quarterback instincts. Coming to play here, picks up the fumble, runs around right in. <laughs> You're out. Touchdown. <laughs> Got him at first. One down, but more importantly, Wilhelm does get the third. That's not ruled a sacrifice. Here's Brian Turney, who singled past Lewis at third to score Wilhelm back in the fifth, the number nine hole hitter. And you're right, Fred. The number eight and nine guys have given Granger some difficulty today, much more so than the heart of the order. He's handled Wycheck uh, with not much of a problem. He, of course, he's a left-hand hitter. Well, Brent Willem has been on base all three times, and he showed great base running ability there from and heads-up ability getting to third base on that play. But uh, I'm going to have to disagree with the official score. I mean, I, I think it's a sacrifice all the way. I mean, what else was he trying to do? I just changed it, I'm told. Thank you. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> no sooner than Marty Aronoff made sure that I knew they had made the change. That means you guys can still talk between them. <laughs> we don't want you and the official score to have a problem. There's Wilhelm down at third. One out in a 3-1 ball game. But how typical is that of college baseball? Two strikes and you lay the bunt down. What was great about it was that he's had three at bats to lay down a bunt and hadn't done it yet. He finally got to two strikes. Said, "Ooh, I better do it now." Could only execute it with two <laughs> yeah. strikes. He needs the pressure. Zone, and that is not good news for Texas A&M when that pitch is up in the zone. Three and one to count. For well, last at bat, Turney got a base hit on a 2-0 pitch. Now he's in the same situation with a 3-1 count. This is what you do not want to do as a pitcher: get behind to the hitters. His first career home run back in the region. Turney was able to turn a three-run homer into an 8-2 win against Rutgers. Rangers now thrown a hundred and you see his ratio from balls to strikes isn't that good so he's, he's not uh, pinpoint today by no stretch of the imagination. The three two to turn smack to center but will it hold up it does Thomas in to make the catch and they'll hold Wilhelm not deeply enough in the center field to warrant sending him in. Let's go down to Larry Conley, who has, uh, I think, some more proud parents with him, Larry. 
Tim, I'm sitting here with Robert Granger, the father of Jeff Granger, and uh, you get a little breathing room the last inning, and all of a sudden, things pop up. It's helped quite a bit. It's a rocky start, but he seemed like he settled down some, and you know, maybe things will come together. Did you see he was a little nervous in those first couple of innings? Yeah, his delivery didn't have the, you know, the same motion it normally does. It seemed like he's, he's settling down gradually. Tell me about, uh, as a parent, you got to be awfully pleased about the, his selection in the draft, number five overall. It's awfully impressive. Yes, sir, the whole family's pleased. And he's pleased with the team he's going with. You know, he's, he's happy and extremely pleased. So we hope everything works out great for him. Listen, I understand you didn't want me to talk to you because of the ESPN jinx of last year. Is that something you tried to avoid me? I'm hoping you left that in Atlanta. <laughs> Tim, if you'll recall, you and Fred last year, my first two interviews with Miami and Cal Cal or Fullerton, two guys hit home runs immediately after leaving the parents. <laughs> the Larry Conley factor. Superstitious parents usually give birth to so superstitious baseball players, right? Yeah, really? Well, then in that case, you'd want to be taken out of the game right now. <laughs> Send Trimble out to talk to him right now. Two outs now, though, with Wilhelm still at the third and Jeff Berbling at the leadoff man at the plate. 0 for 3 and called out on strikes in each of his last two appearances. It's been the top of the order that uh, has not produced today for Kansas. Burblinger really the table setter. When they play their best baseball, Burblinger is getting on base. I mean, you're talking about a guy that's stolen 33 of 36 attempts, and he's not been on to make anything happen today. And he's 0 for 4 after that ground out. So Wilhelm gets on. There was some excitement, but it led to no runs for Kansas. It's still a 3-1 game through the middle of the... I've worked with Wood a long time, and believe me, no job's finished. With Duck's Back, total wood finish. Left untreated, rain and moisture can strip wood of its natural beauty. Duck's Back penetrates and seals to protect against the ugly buildup of mold and mildew. And cleanup is easy with soap and water. Now register to win this Duquesne gas grill wherever you buy Duck's Back. Take it from a guy who knows, nothing sheds water like Duck's Back. Your San Antonio Oldsmobile dealers aren't into that high-pressure stuff, so they'd just like you to know that you can now buy an Oldsmobile Cutlass Sierra Value Edition with air, V6, cruise, tilt, and more for just $13,995. That's all I wanted to say. So think it over. And it's been nice talking with you. It's your money. NCAA College World Series underway in 1993. Game one, top seeded Texas A&M with a line score of 3-8-1, leaving Kansas 1-5-0, oh, the eighth seed. As we move to the bottom half of the seventh inning, Tim Brando and Fred Lynn, happy to have you with us. We'll be with you the rest of the fortnight that will last till the end of next week. And Mike Patrick and Steve Garvey will be on with you tonight for Long Beach State and LSU. And we have a new pitcher relieving Chris Korn, David Meyer. Meyer, a left-hander, junior from Tulsa, Oklahoma. There you see his numbers, and uh, he's a three-pitch pitcher, basically. He's got a real good fastball and a good changeup, but he just has average breaking stuff. Pitched really well in the regionals for this team. Gonzalez sends that one right over to first and Whitechuck makes the throw. One down. Here's Stephen Claybrook who singled a left in the fifth. about laying that butt down and Niemeyer he's already had some problems that ball caught him that time yeah. Meyer along with David Salt were the two top options today for Dave Bingham regardless of the outcome of this game the mere fact that Korn was able to go six innings and we should close the book on him. He pitched six. He gave up eight hits. 
gave up three runs two base on balls and a couple of strikeouts the mere fact he went that far gives Kansas some leverage not just for the remainder of this game but for game two of the series because they now have Jimmy Walker ready to stop a game they desperately wanted him to get some rest he has 11 saves for this team he's been their stopper closer in the bullpen and of course split or Jamie split could start the next game very important for Kansas that they only use two no more than three pitchers today as you look at Chris Corn. Yeah, Corn, you, you, you have to like his uh, job that he did because when we did see the stats about uh, the Aggies, you know, they were averaging double figures for the original playoffs, so he's cooled their bats down considerably. Kept his ball club in the game. High and tight from Meyer. And the count is now even at two and two. Chopped towards short. Rude makes the play. Good throw. Had to throw that one off the wrong foot and gunned it over there in time. We've seen some nice plays by Rude at shortstop today. The short hop that he fielded cleanly. Now this one. Well, Rude made play because he charges the ball. He knows that Claybuck runs really well, and he's got that good arm. You know, like we said earlier, he does do some pitching for the KU Jayhawks. In fact, you look at the numbers, he's has a few errors, a few more than they'd like. He'll get another chance again. <laughs> right on cue. Part of the reason he makes a few more errors is because he gets to more balls. A few more chances than the average shortstop. The end of seven, three one, Aggies. I'll never forget you. If you want great taste that won't fill you up and never let you down, make it a Bud Light. Not so fast. Yes! Ow! Oh, Rex, go get me the vice grip pliers. Rex! Get lost! Thanks, Rex. Vice Grip Locking Pliers, the handyman's best friend. Ahead on Sports Center, the Bulls are home, the Knicks are on the ropes. It's game six. Speaking of three peats, Jim Currier's semifinal held the key in Paris, and the Packers continue to load up on free agents. Bob Lee and Mark Jones at 7 Eastern. The Fighting Tigers of LSU. Champions here in 1991 against the 49ers of Long Beach State, the fourth seed. Two outstanding teams coming up immediately following our game, 7.30 Eastern, 4.30 on the West Coast, right after Sports Center, which will follow our game this afternoon. Oklahoma State and Texas coming your way tomorrow night, midnight Eastern time, 9 o'clock on the West Coast. Gary Ward's club taking on the horns of Coach Gustafson. Texas has been here a record 27 times. School with as many appearances in the College World Series. Here in game one, the Aggies of Texas A&M with a 3-1 to one lead as we move to the top of the eighth. Tim Brando, Fred Lynn, happy to have you with us. And Daryl Monroe will lead it off for Kansas. Jeff Granger. He's pitched out of some jams. A couple of innings where he blew away the competition, but really not with full command of his entire repertoire today. Struggling through it, yielding only five Jayhawk hits. Yeah, that's a credit to his pitching ability. He is struggling, but yet he's only allowed five hits in one run. The good ones find ways to win when they don't have their best stuff. Chris Korn gave up two walks today. And both of them come, came around to score. And uh, how often that happens to starting pitchers, even on a good day. And... Uh, 
to his credit, he pitched through a number of jams as well. And during the middle innings, really had command of the Texas a and hitters. Yeah, he dominated in the middle innings. He got his breaking stuff over. Didn't walk anybody then. Monroe just waved at that one through the bat as well. I'm told that uh, four of the eight teams, by the way, at this year's College World Series are swinging Louisville Slugger aluminum bats, not just Easton. Two and two the count. Should Monroe get on, expect some activity because he has some great speed. And we know that Dave Bingham is capable of trying almost anything, including bunting with two strikes to move runners along. <laughs> Must be a Springsteen fan. Yeah, I'm not sure that orange goes with the rest <laughs> of the outfit, but no, maybe, maybe there's some orange in there. Sure it does. <laughs> All right. Some of the yell leaders at Texas A&M uh, wear clothing like that from time to time. Well, Granger wanted that breaking ball and did not get the inside corner from home plate umpire William LaRue. He really wanted it. This is his bread and butter pitch, a slider down and into righties, and it's not where the pitch ends up, ladies and gentlemen. It's where it crosses the plate. And on the hands, and roll fisted into the air and left. And with plenty of room. For those of you that just joined us, Texas A&M had some difficulty today during batting practice. They lost their starting third baseman, Lee Fedora, on a bad hop. It necessitated four lineup changes, moving their catcher to third. Getting a right fielder, Claybrook, into the game that was not scheduled to play. And really could have cost them dearly, but they were able to fight through that problem. Robert Lewis did commit one error, but then came back with a nice double play to get out of an inning. But it has not been a key factor in the 3-1 score to this point. And that's good news for Mark Johnson as Granger now really begins to load up. Well, Wycheck refuses to look for the slider. He keeps thinking he's going to blow a fastball by him, and he won't look for that slider. There's the fastball. But that's a show-me fastball. He's not going to throw it to him for a strike when he's dominated him with a slider all day long. Wycheck fouled out once, but struck out swinging in each of his last two trips. That does not include one pickoff that he had earlier today as well. And most guys with good fastballs are going to get a lot of flyouts because they have good hop on the ball. At the tail end of the pitch, the ball has a tendency to rise a little bit, and players are underneath the ball. Hence, you hit it in the air a lot. Or you don't hit it at all. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> you have to be somewhat sympathetic to Wycheck's plan. Here he is going against his old team. He Originally played for AM for a season and transferred over to Kansas. And now he has to face the best left hander in college baseball. Right in the glove. And that's his third K. Believe me, I'm very sympathetic yeah. with him because I've been in that situation before where you're the only left hander in the lineup against a tough lefty. And that lefty sees you up there and says, Oh, baby, you're not even getting close to get coming in to get a hit. I mean, he really bears down on you after seeing right handers all day long. Here's Niemeyer. Made a fine play defensively, also has a hit. Lines it to second on the ground ball. Gonzalez comes up with it. And that's the end of the inning. Nothing doing for Kansas. Ranger rolling along, looking for a complete game win in game one. We're in the middle of the eighth. Aggies by two. If Kelly Air Force Base is closed, the ripple effect will reach each and every one of us. San Antonio needs your support today. 
14,000 jobs will be lost. Join us at the San Antonio International Airport this Saturday from 11 a.m. till 1 p.m. to show your support or join us at the General Hutnell entrance at Kelly Air Force Base at 11 a.m. Thank you. This is the Oldsmobile 88 Special Edition. It comes with a powerful 3800 V6, four-speed automatic, anti-lock brakes, an airbag, and more. And you can get this larger and more luxurious sedan for only $18,995. Well, it surprised a lot of people here in San Antonio. It's your money. One, Texas A&M is leading Kansas in the middle of your picture there is Lee Fedora who <laughs> now, now he's going to face the ribbing because oh, they sure. go ahead and they win the game without him and they have to make four lineup changes now he'll be able to play in the next game on Sunday now he has to take the heat of what happened to him prior to the start of today's game I, I can see it right now it's now it's going to be Leo the lip <laughs> He's, he's all smiles now, but I saw that play when it occurred, and there was a shot off the bat in BP. He took a bad hop off the lip of the infield, off the lip of the infield, and uh, hit him right in the mouth, and he lost the tooth, and they never did find that tooth. You know, that's worth money. You know? It sure is. Robert Harris leads it off with a solid shot to right. Ninth hint. Ninth hit of the afternoon for Texas A&M. Here comes Brian Thomas, and it was in the sixth with the score tied at one when the wind suddenly stopped blowing in. He got the pitch right where he wanted it. It's a sign of a smart hitter, you know? That was his 15th homer of the year. This time, slow grounder, and they get Thomas at first base. Harris moves down to second. <laughs> Bunts the ball right after a home run. Only here. Well, you know, he didn't hit it far enough the first time, so he <laughs> saw. He said, "Well, you have to bunt because that ball just barely made it over the, the outfield fence." So I don't have confidence in your ability. Actually, what it shows is that three to one. Mark Johnson doesn't feel very comfortable with that, so he wants another run and a little bit more insurance. But you'd think that uh, after a guy hit a home run, they might let him swing away. But he was facing a left-hander, left-hander versus left-hander. That's so. right. David Miner will pinch hit for Texas A&M. And that will bring Dave Bingham out. So they did not want John Curl, the left-hander, to face David Meyer. And uh, you would think David Solt will now get the call. They'll bring the right hander out. Perhaps Walker, but David Solt likely to get the call. We have a stop in the action in the bottom of the eighth. Aggies by two. When you go out to play, you're going to get thirsty. And when you're thirsty, you better have your Gatorade. It goes down easy, quenches to the core. Quenches your deep down body thirst 30% faster than water. Three to one our score in the bottom of the eighth. David Meyer leaves the game with one out and a runner at second. And will yield to right-hander David Salt, who's seen uh, a lot of time as a middle reliever this year. 6'1", 190-pound senior from Cincinnati, Ohio. Yeah, David has a sinky-type fastball that he likes to keep down in the zone to induce a lot of ground balls. He has a very good changeup, and he has a slurve, which is a breaking ball that's in between a slider and a curveball. In his last outing, he produced 20 ground outs, so that's, uh, that's really what they want from him. Just keep the ball down, keep us in the game. As we have one last crack at Jeff Granger coming in the ninth, and that uh, that run out there means a great deal. Out at second base, Robert Harris. 
two run ball game even against someone like Granger you, you got to believe that's still winnable. Yeah, somebody gets on aluminum bat you know, boom yep. home run and it's it's tied up so they'd certainly like to push across this run if they could. He'll be facing the top pinch hitter for the Aggies David Miner. 8 of 17 with runners in scoring position was 4 of 8 in the Central Regional. So he's 500 in postseason play. Not bad numbers. Pretty good on base percentage right there, 580. You raised a great point. You know, we talk so much about the Aggies' strength and their pitching staff depth, but uh, overshadowed somewhat of the offensive numbers for this team. Their run production has been outstanding. And as a pitch hitter, you want to come up to the plate swinging at the first available fastball. Um, in this situation, Salt snuck one by him on the first pitch, and now he's going to face the breaking stuff. It's hard enough to, to come into the game cold, but you don't want to get too deep into the count as a pinch hitter. In his first at bat as an Aggie, he had a two run shot against Washington back on February the 13th at David Miner. Up and doing that time, and look at this throw. Niemeyer had a shot at Harris. David Salt pretty impressive with three pitches to Miner. And Niemeyer even more impressive with that uh, gun arm of his. Robert Lewis looks at a breaking ball in the dirt. Now, if you get the same scouting report that we did against Salt, and you say, well, he's going to have a sinking type fastball, then he blows you away with high heat, and you say, hey, wait a minute. That's not what the report said. Lewis has hit the ball very well today. An excellent play by Rude back in the fourth, robbed him. And then he grounded to Root again in the short, uh, in, the, uh, in the third, and in the sixth. He was to have been the catcher today prior to Fedora's injury during batting practice. And Trumbull got the call to catch. He moved to third and Claybrook into right. And on the hands, but it's enough to get to center. They're sending Harris, and the throw is not in time. Texas A&M gets the insurance run with the help of Robert Lewis, who I'm sure felt owed that time. He had uh, had some good swings today with nothing to show for it. Yeah, he spanked the ball pretty hard every time up, but he's kept the ball on the ground this time. He gets the ball up in the zone, and he drives it into, into center field for a base hit. The only reason that they had to play at the plate because this ball is caught on one hop, charged hard by Monroe. Good strong throw, but it's just a little bit offline. If it's on the third base side, they might have a chance. Quick tag, but not in time for Niemeyer. So Salt can't keep AM from getting an extra run. It's a 4 1 ball game. They'll go to the pin for the final out of the inning. We'll be back with the pitching change in a moment. In just over a half hour, your family will disappear out the Dad, door. What do you fix for dinner? Well, if you're ready to go when I am. It's quick. It's easy. Oh, I invited Bobby over. It's beef. Hey, Bobby, pull up a chair. It's what's for dinner. Come on, let's get a cold one. Our total attendance for today's game. Oh, would you look at this beer line? I'm gonna go back. What? Foul ball? No, no, I'm not. Foul ball! Foul ball? Foul ball? Out of the way! I got it! If you want great taste that won't fill you yes. up and never let you down, make it two Bud Lights, please. Make it a Bud Light. Hey, you got another ball? 
Texas A&M and Kansas were tied at one through the sixth and Brian Thomas hit a home run. They nudged two across in that inning and now have an insurance run here in the eighth to make it a 4-1 ball game and Tom Stewart senior from Scottsdale Arizona comes into the game. Frankly he has struggled in his most recent outings and I'm sure this is an opportunity for Dave Bingham to get this kid some confidence as the College World Series presses on. He knows he's got Splithorf ready to go and Walker ready to go uh, whether it's a loser's bracket game or winner's bracket game come Sunday. Well Coach Bingham told us before the game that uh, if Stewart was was to get in there today it was going to be a left hander in this kind of situation hopefully get him out and get his offense back in the field. Rob Trimble is that left hander. 6-1 sophomore from Carthage Texas. Gets that one right in where he wants it down and in it's hit to right for a base hit. And the throw to get Lewis is cut off. Goes wild and thrown away. They wanted to cut it but couldn't. <laughs> And a 5-1 ball game now for the Aggies. Well, that's the last thing that Bingham wanted to have happen. First pitch swinging, too. Trimble, three for four and a couple of ribbies. Yeah, Trimble got to look like a breaking ball up in the zone. And uh, Tarquinio had a tough time getting the ball out of his glove in right field. Otherwise, they would have had a play at the plate, a legitimate play at the plate. The Aggies as a team now are four of six with runners in scoring position. That was good hitting by Trimble because he know they brought in a left-hander to face him. And he knows that he's going to get a breaking ball 90% of the time. He went up there and looked for it and got it. That's good hitting. Smith sends it to second. Herblinger makes the play and the inning is over. But two more for Texas A&M. They've got the four-run lead for Granger. Exactly what the Aggies and Mark Johnson wanted going into the night. With so many different kinds of bats being used in college baseball today, isn't it amazing how far some coaches can take a team with only one? Louisville Slugger. Tire foam protectant from armor all. One spray, and even old tires look great. Ah, kind of makes you wish we made car foam. Tire foam from armor all. Presenting the Ryobi Detail Sander. It gets into all those small, tight spaces where other sanders can't reach. And with special accessories, it also prepares surfaces for painting. Scrapes paint and adhesive off glass, wood, and metal. Even polishes and buffs to a brilliant finish. In fact, you can use the Ryobi Detail Sander any place your imagination takes you. Five to one, Texas A&M with the lead. Five runs on 11 hits and one error. Jayhawks one five and zero. Oh. Chris Clemens comes into the game to pitch and this is an opportunity now to get him some work because of the four run lead. Jeff Granger closes out his day giving up a run on five hits and seven strikeouts. Yeah it's a good idea by Mark Johnson to get Clemens in the game even though he didn't need to be in there. But uh, they might need him later on in the series and they'll have some uh, innings under his belt or an inning under his belt anyway. And this guy is a power pitcher. He's the closer on the ball club right now. He goes right after the hitters with a good hard fastball. He's a very hard slider, and he'll throw an occasional changeup to the left-hand hitters. A couple of defensive changes. Minor moves to left field, and Billy Harlan moves from left into first base. And m has used a variety of people at first, only because Curl got hot in postseason play that he secure that spot, and these late innings changes. Nothing new for the fans from the College Station area. You know, we talked about Lee Fedora and the agony from uh, his teammates that he'll receive for not being able to play today. He's a College Station kid. So the fans, I'm sure, are very concerned about him and are very happy to know that he's okay and should be available to play on Sunday. Josh Igo leading it off. He doubled to right in the fourth, then flied to Thomas in the sixth. Walked in his first at bat, one for two on the day. You 
another good thing about getting Clemens in there, he's got four runs to play with. You know, he may be a little tight. This is his first appearance in the College World Series as well. So if he walks his hitter, I mean, it's, it's not the way you want to start out. But at least it's not the pressure of a two to one ball game. Well, he's up in the count now, three and oh. Well, we talked about Kansas and the fact that they've never been in a college World Series. Texas A&M really this team hasn't. In fact no team has in 29 years. From College Station so even though this is their third official trip to the College World Series in the modern era. They've made it to the regional finals for the last six years but this is a first experience for them as well. Bounding ball to second. Gonzalez makes the play. One down and two to go. Tarquinio up. In fact, the Jayhawks' appearance in this series, the 93 College World Series, gives them a unique distinction. Kansas has a chance to become the only school ever to win a football bowl game, that being over BYU, and to reach the men's college basketball Final Four in the College World Series in the same year. If you're wondering who last accomplished that feat or at least came close to the potential that Kansas would have it's LSU in 86. They lost the Sugar Bowl to Nebraska but they made it to the final four as a Cinderella team in Dallas. John Hot Plate Williams was playing at that time. Now with the Clippers. Hot Plate Williams. That's right. Base hit. Roy Tricrinio is on base with a base. Nice single for him. So one on with one out. And here's Brent Wilhelm. Well, KU certainly should be proud of their athletic program and the progress that they're, in particular, that their baseball team has achieved this season. Brent Wilhelm representing the toughest part of the order for Jeff Granger today at least. Yeah the bottom third has been really pesky for KU. One two three of the Kansas order a collective 0 for 9 against Granger and then of course the back half of the order due in large part to the run production and the potential run production of this afternoon for Kansas. They've only been able to push one across. One and one to Wilhelm. Chopped foul towards being in the third. Speaking of LSU in 86, Dave Bingham speaks very highly of LSU's head bat baseball coach Skip Berkman. In fact, the two are very close. They were on Mark Marquis's staff on the 88 Olympic team. And as he was getting his program started six years ago, he relied heavily on Berkman who in nine years has made it to six College World Series. He knows all about it. Wilhelm looks bad on that pitch. Good heat that time coming from Clemens. Dan Rude. Pretty good day for him. Handled ten chances in the infield. At times when the game was extremely close, a 1 1 ball game, he came up big defensively. Yeah, and most of those plays were not routine plays either. I mean, he made some great plays where he charged the ball and threw out fast runners. Kansas down to their last out, and he chops it towards second. Gonzalez will get the force, and the Aggies have done it. They win game one of the NCAA College World Series, and Jeff Granger. Goes eight, gets one inning of help from Chris Clemens to put him away. For the Jayhawks, one six and zero. Oh, the Aggies five eleven and one. They move into the winners bracket on. You buy extra strength Rolaids now with one thousand milligrams of fast relief. With the unbridled passion and innocence of youth.